Good morning, and welcome to The Peorian. I'm your host, Paul Gordon. Unless you've been living in a cave the last month or so, you're aware that the buzzword in Washington and political circles these days is jobs. In particular, how best to create them. President Obama, who may be entering the toughest period of his political career as 2012 approaches, has proposed a jobs plan and wants Congress to act on it quickly. He says his plan will create hundreds of thousands of jobs, ensure against the economy falling back into recession, and it, quote, won't add a dime to the deficit, end of quote, despite its estimated price tag of $450 billion that includes a $65 billion tax break to employers. Can it be done? Well, probably not without higher taxes on the wealthy and closing tax loopholes for corporations, which many argue is, in effect, a tax increase. The president argues that, quote, it's a plan that says everybody, including the wealthiest Americans and biggest corporations, have to pay their fair share, end of quote. Republican lawmakers have wasted no time criticizing the proposal, and that includes our own congressman, Aaron Schock. We're honored to have him as our guest today, and we'll get his thoughts on this and other issues after these messages. Welcome back. Our topic today is jobs and other political footballs being tossed around Capitol Hill these days. And our guest is Congressman Aaron Schock, the Re Peoria Republican from the 18th District. Congressman, thank you for being here. Great to be with you, Paul. Thanks for having me on. Let's talk, if we might, about the President's Jobs Plan. First of all, what do you think of it? And is there any part of it that you like? Well, um, I, like most uh, Americans, were uh, waiting with anticipation for what the president would come out. You know, he, uh, he ended his three-day bus tour across the Midwest, started in Minneapolis, made his way through Iowa, and ended right here in Peoria, Illinois, of all places, and took off on Air Force One out of the Peoria airport and said, when I get back from my vacation and back from Labor Day, I'm going to come forward with a, a jobs agenda, a, a jobs bill to jumpstart our economy. And I honestly can say I was waiting to see what the new plan would be, what the new proposal would be. I will tell you, having been in that chamber the night he gave the speech, that it wasn't just Republicans that were taken aback by what he proposed. It was many of my Democratic colleagues as well. And if you watch uh, that speech uh, again and you look at the audience, Rarely was there standing ovations, even among the Democratic members. That's true. Uh, the fact of the matter is, this is really a mini-stimulus bill. Now, I don't need to criticize the last stimulus bill. Obviously, I didn't support it. I didn't think it would work. And I think based on the highest sustained unemployment levels since, since the Great Depression, which is what we have right now, evidence shows that it hasn't worked. Now, $400 billion is what he's proposing to spend in this bill. Over half of the $400 billion is to continue two policies. One is to continue unemployment benefits for 99 weeks, which is roughly two years. Mm -hmm. And the other uh, proposal is to keep the payroll tax deduction for employers uh, when they hire someone. Those two proposals alone, which are currently on the books, which are set to expire at the end of this year, cost over $200 billion of that $400 billion. Now look. I would tell you this uh, with all sincerity. Republicans and Democrats supported those proposals. Yes. Republicans and Democrats voted last January to continue unemployment benefits. They voted to uh, put the payroll tax deduction in place because they were told, like the president is saying now, if you do that, it'll lower unemployment, uh, it'll, uh, it will help uh, gentrify the economy and the like. The fact of the matter is, it hasn't worked. And I would submit to you the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting different results. So what I don't like about the president's plan isn't so much what the president's plan is, other than the president's plan is really to continue doing what we're already doing. And that, to me, uh, is insane to think that we're going to continue doing what we're doing and get different results. The American people want us to do something different. They realize that we're in a, in a mountain of debt. The only way we're going to get out of debt is for us to stop spending and for the private sector to grow. And so the natural question for the, the, the president, for members in the Congress to ask is, what is it going to take for the private sector to grow? What's it going to take for private sector to hire? And the answer that I get back unequivocally from the entrepreneur is, get the federal government out of my way and simplify the tax code. Uh, you know, you said in your opener, 
uh, taxes are a part of the president's proposal. Uh, I agree with the president that our tax code is unfair. I agree that uh, some of the wealthiest in this, in this uh, uh, society don't pay their fair share, but I would argue that, that many of the wealthy in our society do pay their fair share. But when you have a company like GE, for example, which made record profits last year, but paid zero in corporate income tax, that's a problem. And our own hometown company like Caterpillar paid its fair share of taxes. So we need to simplify the tax code, get rid of a lot of those deductions, uh, and, and broaden the base so everybody pays their fair share. Uh, that's the type of tax proposal that I can get behind with the president. But when you get just to the president's jobs bill, which is $400 billion in spending, mm -hmm. uh, I think a lot of Americans say it, it's a bit lacking. What about the, the Warren Buffett rule, is what they're calling it? Is that a fair, is what Warren Buffett says and the president is now picking up on it? Yeah. Is that fair? Well, um, I'm not sure um, Warren Buffett is the solution to our, our country's <laughs> ails. I, I, I would say first to someone like Warren Buffett, who apparently has more money than, than he needs, uh, anyone can write a check to the federal government for payment of the debt any day of the week, and it goes to the Treasury to pay down the debt. So if any of your listeners have a couple extra billion dollars they want to send to the federal government, we will happily use it to pay down the debt. That said, uh, a couple of things. Number one, Warren Buffett points out the fact that he makes a lot of money on capital gains, mm -hmm. money that he's made on the sale of, of assets, the sale of stocks and bonds. Capital gain money is basically earnings that you earn, uh, taxes you pay on earnings that you earn off of income you've already paid taxes on. That's why capital gains is lower. In other words, if you make $50,000 this year and you pay taxes on that, and then you invest it in a piece of real estate or you invest it in a piece of uh, a stock or a bond and you make money on that, the federal government says we're gonna pay tax you less on that capital gains. That's why the capital gains is at 15%. And historically in this country, it's been less. The fact of the matter is this, the more you tax of something, the less you get, and the less you tax of something, the more you get. The easiest way for me to explain this is cigarette sales, right? Why does the state of Illinois continue to raise taxes on cigarette sales? Because they want fewer and fewer cigarette sales. And what do you know? Every time the state of Illinois raises taxes on cigarette sales, we sell fewer cigarettes in the state of Illinois. Yeah. If you can understand that concept, you can understand taxing more on capital, investment, entrepreneurialism, and risk-taking. The more you raise taxes on that, the less investment, entrepreneurialism, and risk-taking you're gonna get in our economy. And it's why so many of us are opposed to raising the capital gains rates because it is the, that tax rate we all as Americans pay collectively on the risk-taking that we make. And we need more of that. We need more investment, more entrepreneurialism if we're gonna turn this economy around. When we come back, we're going to discuss the recent debt ceiling mess and some of the criticism leveled at Congress by an important business leader from here in Peoria. Stay tuned.